Hey guys, Metal Man 329 here. Uh, just gonna show you some differences, major differences, between a Predator Hemi and Predator non Hemi engine. Um, at a quick glance, they look quite similar, and a lot of people seem to think or are under the impression that the head is really all that's different in these engines. When in fact, I'm gonna show you something that's actually quite surprising. So, um, these boxes are what these came out of, both picked up from Harbor Freight out of the same pile, but I did pay attention to the part numbers because I wanted to demonstrate both a Hemi and non-Hemi. So this box, you'll see the part number is 60363, that's for the Hemi engine. And this box has number 69730, and that's the non-Hemi engine. So what most people are familiar with in identifying these engines is the valve cover. You'll see the non-Hemi, it's gonna have a steel stamped valve cover, and the Hemi has a cast aluminum valve cover, but that's just where the differences begin. And at a quick glance, they do look quite similar, but let me bring this camera over here, and I'll show you how different they really are. So here's a little bit of an up-close view of the two engines, and you'll see the pull start cooling configuration is actually quite different on one to the other. Uh, this has a lot more cooling fins than the non-hemi and even the pull start and the shape of it is quite different from one to the other. If you look at the decals here, you'll see that the decals are actually slightly different one from the other as well. And if you look at the air box, you'll see this drops down here, and this one is straight across. Up on top, you can see the air boxes are quite similar, but different. And even more different, this exhaust, which is quite flat, versus this exhaust, which tapers off. If we come around and look at the other sides of the engine, here on the back you'll see the side cover. This is kind of a smooth aluminum casting and the Hemi has more of a dull matte gray casting. Is also an identifying number here and nothing over here. Another view of the two and you'll see that the gas tanks are quite different. This one is flat, has a label here. The cap has quite a few little grips on it. Over here this one is not flat therefore they had to put the label in a different position and the cap only has a few grip spots. Not that these differences make a lot of difference in the function of the engines, but you can see that they are quite different. Now the shaft heights off the table are going to be the same, the shaft lengths, the shaft diameter they're all going to be the same. And that's pretty standard for any Honda clone, if you want to call this a Honda clone, and we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. If you look, they're pretty much the same height. Uh, this switch looks quite different than this switch. Back to the boxes, you'll notice inside one box, it's packed with this corrugated cardboard and you'll find the spark plug key which is kind of a shiny nickel plated spark plug key. This box not cor corrugated cardboard but styrofoam and you'll see the yellow zinc plated spark plug key. And really what I'm telling you is that these engines are not produced in the same factory. They are two completely different engines produced by two completely different factories. Both made in China, but not by the same factories. 
You might ask, why would Harbor Freight sell these engines as the same Predator 212 6.5 horsepower engines? And the answer is because Harbor Freight has over 850 stores. And they typically have somewhere in the neighborhood of about 30 of these engines on hand at any given time. Or at least that's what I've seen. So if you do quick math, 850 stores at about 30 per store, that's over 25,000 of just this one engine alone in all the stores across the country. If Harbor Freight had to rely on just one factory to produce all the engines, uh, they probably couldn't keep up for one. And secondly, if anything should happen between the relationship of the factory and Harbor Freight, or if the, the factory just can no longer produce uh, the quantity demanded by Harbor Freight due to manufacturing other products for other companies, uh, they'd be in trouble. They wouldn't be able to supply all these engines. So you can't have all your eggs in one basket. <clears throat> Therefore, uh, Harbor Freight at some point decided to go to another factory and produce uh, these engines with another factory so they have a backup supplier, actually a dual supplier. So they get these engines in from both suppliers on a regular basis uh, and they keep both suppliers happy and they don't have all their eggs in one basket. Now, the factories that produce these engines are probably both very good at producing Honda clone engines. They're probably producing them before Harbor Freight even approached them to produce them for them. But that explains why one has a hemispherical head while the other has a different head style. That was a complete accident. The original non-hemi was being sold for quite a while. The hemi came later. Just so happened the factory they approached as a backup supplier or a dual supplier had a slightly different head design. Most of the internals are the same because they are based on Honda GX200, but Honda GX200 is 196 cc's, whereas these are 212. So basically the Chinese have taken a Honda, they've copied the design, but they've bored and stroked the engine from 196 cc's to 212. So at 99 bucks for these engines versus $329 or so for a Honda, you're getting a performance version of a Honda GX200 uh, because it's already been bored and stroked. And if you prefer the Hemi design, you've got that too. Honestly, they're both six and a half fourths. They're both 212 cc's. And my personal experience, but not necessarily uh, yours, is I prefer the original design, the non-Hemi. Um, I've run both engines. I've run several of them in various projects, not just mini bikes and go-karts and tractors, but also rototillers, um, snow blowers, and just recently a wood chipper. And my personal experience is that these non-hemi engines, which is the first factory Harbor Freight has been making them with, they just run and run and run. Uh, I've never had any mechanical issues whatsoever. I've removed the governor, I've modified these things, and they run great. The Hemi version, however, I sought after this when you know people identified that there was a Hemi version. I sought after the number 60363, and uh, the first one was great. Um, second time I bought one, I had a problem. Right out of the box, tried to pull start it, and it locked up. It was completely locked up. Um, being brand new, I didn't think it was my place to take it apart and try to figure out what was wrong with it because that's why I bought a brand new engine, so I didn't have to fiddle around with it. Uh, so I took it back to the store and they, you know, replaced it no problem. And the second one was fine. Um, six months or maybe even a year later, there was another Hemi that I bought. It ran for about two weeks and uh, also gave me the same problem. Eventually it became difficult to start. It was like it was hydro locked. Um, so I think that maybe the factory that produces the non-hemi version has a better quality control and therefore the tolerances are much closer and more consistent from one engine to the other. Um, the hemis, maybe this factory, although the hemi design itself might be considered better with better rocker arms than that, um, but maybe the factory themselves just don't have the quality control that's as good as the first factory. Um, that's a guess, and it's my opinion based on my personal experience. I'm not going to say whether the Hemi version is a better engine than the non-Hemi or vice versa, but actually after running both, 
for quite a long time in various projects, I tend to prefer the non hemi. Um, but again, it's pretty obvious. You can see I wanted to show everyone different things they can look for to identify the engines and uh, just point out that um, they are two completely different engines built in two completely different factories. So if you knew that already, great. If you didn't, I hope this video was helpful. Um, but anyway, we'll see you in the next video.